There's no denying, if you have off-street parking, a home EV charger can make driving an electric car as much as 10 times cheaper than petrol. But now that mass market EVs have been around for a while, there's a good chance that the EV charger you had installed at home which is, could be over three years old, is starting to feel a little bit out of date. Or like this one, it could have stopped working out of warranty. It will depend on the charge you have and the goals you have for your home energy system, whether fixing a broken charger or an upgrade makes the best economic sense. But technology has moved on apace and so have safety standards. In my case, I wanted to get an upgrade in technology, so I chose this the Humax MX-7 as my upgrade home charger. We'll get to the advanced features of the Humax MX-7 shortly, but if you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. When the original charger was put in, it was installed to a high standard by Octopus Energy, but that was over three years ago, and there have been some new regulations that have come in within that time frame. So the upgrade was a bit more involved than just whipping the old box off the wall and plugging the new one into the old wiring. In my case, all the cabling had to be replaced, and that wasn't to do with the quality of the wiring, but because the wiring didn't have certain features that a modern smart EV charger needs. Physically, the Humax MX-7 is an attractive looking charger. Anderson may hold the absolute pinnacle for attractive looking chargers, but this is still a pretty good looking one. The MX-7 also comes with a robust clipping system for the charging plug and it's reasonably priced. You also get a couple of RFID tags, the use of which I'll talk about later. Charged EV is Humax's preferred installation partner. We talked to a technician about what was involved with this particular installation job. Hi, I'm Connor, work for Charged EV. I uh, came here today to install a Humax MX-7 charger for James. It was a nice and easy install. All we had to do actually for this charger because it has a load balancing feature built into it. it was replace the cable because originally it already had a charger installed but because you didn't have the cat6 cable inside the original cable uh, that just meant we had to rerun the cable so take this cable off already what was already in place rerun it through a bit of trunking on the inside that was already there um, and uh, re-clip it again but use brand new clips and we put metal clips on every third clip for the fire rating as well some scenarios uh, you can come to a job like this where we have to replace the cable because um, it's missing that data cable for the load management but sometimes we have come to it and it's a case of lots of groundworks are needed tiled um, driveways and they've got it on a post and if the cable's undersized missing the data cable that can cause issues when we come in it's got a data cable it's the bigger cable so generally we use four or six mil there is some charges that require six mil no matter what distance the cable is um, it's their own like regulation so we have to follow that as well and if we get there and it's the undersized we can discuss with you different options you can have a different charger and stuff but obviously sometimes people have their hearts set on stuff and it can be quite disappointing um, another thing could be when you get here water and gas bonding being inaccessible or virtually impossible to do without ripping the house apart that can obviously discourage people to Wanting a, wanting a new install, or if we've come and someone hasn't done it when they should have done it, that can also discourage people as well because they think we're trying to do extra work for nothing, but we're just trying to do the right thing. When we come to install a car charger, like most electrical installs, we got to make sure that things are done in place either before or while we're here um, to make sure that we can certify it for you. Uh, so two main things we check, water bonding and gas bonding. Um, so reason we have to check these, because normally in the old houses, they come up in these metal pipes and because it's metal and it's in the ground it has the potential to generate electricity through it and if you touch a metal pipe that's earthed and a metal pipe that's not earthed that's in the ground there's two different potentials there and that could allow you to get a shock um, which is why we have to run this earth cable or in new installs now they've installed plastic pipes to them so all we have to do is get evidence of that and make sure that that's in place in a case of this scenario we knew the earth cable was running off we could see it running to the kitchen um, but we couldn't find a clamp to get a picture of it or anything so we did have an insight that it was bonded but what we've done we've done an earth long lead test like an R2 lead test um, and as long as we get below a certain reading we're okay and we can prove that that cable that uh, pipe works bonded. Cat6 cable um, it has four pairs inside of it um, all the different colours that you normally get on ethernet cable um, and you use two of those pairs for your CT uh, which is your current transformer, what monitors the load of your house um, and what that allows you to do is on the app you can see how much usage your house is using 
and uh, what will happen is if your house was using too much energy your charger would dial itself down to a point that was safe so you wouldn't blow your main fuse. The other one we have in this charger specifically is for solar um, so if you've got solar installed you can use that second pair um, and connect the other pair inside to another CT near your inverter and then that will allow you to monitor how much energy your solar is producing into your house and what you can use as well. What that does is that connects to the app automatically and you can see on the charging app it's got two branches it'll show you how much energy is coming in from the grid and how much energy is going in from the solar and I think you can also see how much energy you feed back to the grid as well if you have that um, availability. The distribution board inside that was already in place for the original charger um, basically all it was missing was a surge device um, and we install that as standard in our installs due to regulations came out in about 2021 ish um, you used to be able to give the option for the install um, now we do it as a standard but if you don't want it installed you need to sign this waiver but that can cause issues with uh, insurance and stuff like that um, but all we had to do basically whole new enclosure so rip the old fuse board off re-terminate the same tails in because they were uh, decent size um, and with the new cable that we ran run that run through as well and get that connected in all ferreled and all terminated um, the main earth as well was undersized on that fuse board um, a lot of people think because you run smaller tails because the board's not running a lot you can run a smaller earth but in this case it's not um, it's not right I really like this charger in terms of mounting it I think it makes it really easy that the faceplate actually hinges so it makes it nice and accessible you've got a nice big space inside of it it's two screws at the bottom and the top basically holding it on so with that hatch access I think that makes it really easy to use makes it quite hard to scratch the front faceplate as well because obviously it looks really smart and shiny nice little cable holder little clip as well really smart but I think these are really sleek smart chargers I think these will be become very popular once the charger is physically installed, the software needs to be commissioned, which entails getting it on your house's wireless network with a special installer app. Then you can connect to it with the end user app. After you've signed into this app, this is what the home screen looks like. When you plug in an EV for the first time, the charger will prompt you to enroll it as a recognized vehicle. This doesn't work for every car, this older Mercedes plug-in hybrid wasn't recognised, for example. You can still charge it, but you will need to provide permission each time you plug it in. An alternative is to use one of the two RFID tags supplied with the charger. You can tell the charger to charge instantly and set the maximum amps to use. However, clicking on the Charge tab gives you more options. Auto Solar at the top lets you automatically use surplus solar energy from your panels, which is where that second CT clamp connection will come into its own. Otherwise, there are three charging modes currently available with the MX-7. The first is instant mode, where charging begins as soon as you plug in. For the time being, this is also the option to use with a smart charging tariff like Octopus Intelligent Go. In instant mode, the car controls the charging and can trigger this via the schedule from Octopus Energy. Humax is currently working with Octopus to certify the MX-7 directly with Intelligent Go. Once this is complete, Octopus will be able to control the charger so you can use Intelligent Go even with cars that aren't themselves compatible. The second option is scheduled charging where you can input a time period for charging. If your energy tariff offers a fixed period of cheap energy, say from 11.30 p.m. to 5.30 a.m. as shown here, this is the option to choose. Humax's intelligent option offers a different choice. This enables you to set the car to be charged up to a certain percentage at a given time. The MX-7 will manage charging accordingly. This hints at the future features where the MX-7 will truly come into its own. One of these is Vehicle to Grid or V2G. The Humax MX-7 supports the ISO 15118 protocol, so it's ready for V2G. Of course, full support requires a V2G capable car and accredited tariff. Right now, there isn't one available for Humax. The only current V2G tariff in the UK from Octopus is for a specific BYD car and charger from another brand. But the MX-7 will be ready when V2G becomes more widespread. You can read our articles on the benefits of V2G for greater detail, but in a nutshell, it turns your car into a giant domestic battery. You can store up energy from solar and cheap overnight supplies for daily use, or even for sending back to the grid for drastically reduced energy costs. The history tab shows you how much charging energy you've used by day, week, month and year. Finally we get to the settings. Here you can see your registered EVs and RFID tags. 
Charger management provides access to settings including the aforementioned modes and setting the maximum amps that your house can use, which is where that primary CT clamp gets involved. You can connect to a Wi-Fi network and perform over-the-air firmware updates. We expect plenty of new features to become available through the lifetime of this charger, including direct Octopus Intelligence support and V2G options. Energy device shows you the CT clamps and potentially the solar one. You can enter the price settings for your energy tariff, although this won't be entirely correct if Octopus Intelligent decides to charge outside its basic time frame. Then there are sundry user experience and app upgrade options. Going back to the home screen during a charging session, you can see energy flowing to the charger and then to the car, with the total at the bottom. With solar, you'd see energy coming from your panel array as well. There are lots of welcome features with the MX-7. The fact that you need to register a car will mean nobody can steal your energy, but you can give people RFID tags if they want to use an unregistered vehicle. There's clearly plenty more to come that will mean the MX-7 can integrate very well into a home energy ecosystem alongside solar, battery and heat pump. The MX-7 is an attractive, future-proofed charging proposition. It starts at £649 for the untethered version and that goes up to £699 if you want a tethered version with a built-in cable of 7.5 metres. There's also a 5 metre version that's priced somewhere in between the two. That's very reasonably priced. You do have to factor in the cost of installation from Charge EV, but remember you can get the OZEV grant uh, to reduce the price of that. Considering the features available now with the Humax MX-7 and what it promises in the future, this is a reasonably priced and attractive proposition with plenty of smart charging potential. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel.